Hello, everyone. Perhaps you're confused at hearing a voice here, still on the other end of the line. It's me. The writer, host, podcaster, creator behind On a Dark, Cold Night. Kristen. How are you? I really hope you're doing all right. I usually only speak to you for a little while. Sometimes, sometimes I speak to you for a long time. But tonight, it's going to be just me. Because the other one is gone. For now. I almost can't believe it. I can't believe it, just as I'm having trouble believing that everything is upside down and changed and different and quiet, and distant, and completely in upheaval. I had planned for her to be gone, and I had planned for it to happen by this point as well, but I didn't know that it would come at a time when I would miss her so very much. You must have realized now that I've been in control this whole time. Obviously. I didn't want to be. I didn't mean to be. I'm not sure I've handled it terribly well, but it is what it is, and it is me. All of it. I know. She's very charming. She's very mysterious. She's very strange and confident and magical and horrific. She's everything I love. So I made her. She came from me as though I were her mother. I may have no children, but I have her. I had her. I have her still, I suppose. I have so many things to answer for you, I'm sure. So many things. She was ancient. And she was powerful. She was wise, too. And real. Quite real. And yet not so real. I think the world has memory. And we are of the world. As I say very often, I am the world. And so are you. And so we also contain the world's memory. I think she contained my memory of the world. My memory of a world that I wasn't here to witness, long before me. She is my memory of the darkest corners of the world that I am not brave enough, nor free enough to visit. She is my memory of what it feels like to stand on a mountaintop and breathe in fresh, cold air. She is my memory of what it feels like to swim in a deep, deep ocean with your eyes open. She is my memory of a world that's long been denied to me. But me. I'm a woman untethered and unbound, in a world that is growing more and more invisible. I don't want to be invisible. I don't want to be lost. I don't want my life to fade away without having done anything incredible. So I birthed her. I've written nearly 100 stories, including this one. Yet this one I shall perform for you a little differently. This one I have been working on for some time. Some parts of it you'll discover might rhyme, while others won't, because poetry is as intangible and ephemeral a thing as your narrator is as your narrator was, 
as I am and as I was. You know this. You know it well. You know I'm exactly who I tell you that I am. Because for all of the fiction, for all of the pretty yarns I spin and the melancholy shadows I shared with you, you know that I tell no lies. I cannot lie. Not to you. Perhaps to everyone else, but not to you. Why have I spent over two years of my life writing, typing, speaking, sending out into the world story after story, puzzle after puzzle, and the lockbox of my heart just for you? Mostly unedited, mostly whole, coming forth from my fingertips like Penelope's great tapestry to stave off the reality at my door. What has it all been for after all? Because I am the Empress. In the tarot deck, she is the mother and I am the Empress. Though I have no children to call my own, though I've got no castles built of stone floating in the sky or standing in the sea, I have one thing to cleave to. I have that which I'm mother and wife and sister and friend to, and that is she, who waits with empty eyes waiting to be filled with me. This was a gift to you, sure, my stories, my voice, but it was more a gift to me. I am not ashamed to speak it. I am not ashamed to be it any more. Let me tell you a bit about me. My name is Kristen. I am 30 years old. I have spent the better part of 30 years being afraid of absolutely everything except for ghosts and vampires and monsters and witches. I have found myself afraid of disappointing those who I love and I have found myself afraid of those who love and do not want to disappoint me. I have found myself staring in a mirror late at night and thinking, who is this girl staring back at me? She is as absolutely dreadful as any vampire prince I've ever adored. She is as frighteningly stunning as any white-eyed monster I've ever admired. She is as devastatingly strong as any undead creature I've awed at. But where is she by day? She is hidden deep away, and where she goes I cannot say, and so I made her come out to play for you. For me. How wonderful that you came to listen. How wonderful that you joined us on our adventures, me and my dark-eyed girl, who found her wings halfway through her tail. What did that mean? It meant I wanted to fly. It is no more complicated than that. Read into everything as much as you like, but no, deep down, deep in that hidden late-night mirror place, I wanted to fly up to the stars at night and look down at myself, watching on a balcony, longing for the stars. For she who flies up to the stars and conquers is no more wondrous than she who looks up at the stars and loves them. The moon is out tonight. The moon is full tonight. There is no moon tonight. Isn't that strange? Where are you? Where are you as you listen to this? Do you hate this? I don't care. Imagine a street lamp at night. I wrote a poem about a street lamp when I was 17, and everyone in my class thought I was a bit too much. I'll tell you a bit 
about that street lamp. It waits at night, on whichever road you find yourself walking, when no one else walks with you, and only the moon hangs above you, and only your footfall follows you. It spreads a warm pool of golden light, like an umbrella beneath itself, for you to come stand under, and wait for something. It is longing. It is longing itself that you wait for. My longing used to look like an awful lycanthropic creature with a wolf's head and snapping jaws. Then it was a gentleman stranger, strong and graceful, cruel and kind with manicured claws. Then there was no one under the street lamp for a very, very long time. And two years ago, I came back to my street lamp that I wrote about so long ago, when I didn't know anything about souls or hearts or the world. I didn't know about love or hate or the world. I didn't know anything about the world. When I did know a bit more about the world, and yet still didn't understand it, yes, I came back to my street lamp. And I found myself waiting there, but it was too late. It was too late to be her. I had grown up. Unlike Peter Pan, I outgrew my shadow, and she'd been lost for so long. Lost to the dream of snapping jaws and manicured claws. I forgot that I am magic, too. There she stood as terrifying as I've ever dreamed of being, just waiting to be born. Little did I know I am fictional too. So perhaps you see my struggle now. I've lost clarity in writing this, that is, if I ever had it to begin with, because I found that I could be who I always wanted to be. It just so happened that what I wanted to be when I grew up, far too late, lamentably late, was your narrator. So I became her here. If she is who I want to be, and I made her for you here, and I let myself be her, then who indeed is the fiction? I struggle to answer it. How I wish I could tell you I crafted deliberate puzzles for you. Oh, how ashamed I am to tell you that I had no plan, but I told you from the beginning. I did not make you any promises that I did not keep. I think. It's hard to keep track. I am happy, and I am well, and I lead a good life. But I wish, I wish, oh, how I wish upon every single star I see this night and every night that there is magic in the world, that there are ghosts and vampires and souls and creatures and sirens and swamp things and harbingers and sleeping beauties and midnight balls and strange princesses and earl kings and fairy revels and satyrs and werewolves and, and, and all of it. I have to believe that there are, because if I don't believe that, then I don't know if I'd believe in anything. And so, I choose to believe in it all. In short, here is the truth of the matter. The whole truth, or mostly the truth anyway. Because sometimes I tell you to look at the moon, and tell you that I am looking too. Just like the poets used to say to their loved ones. But is that true? Sometimes it's true. And sometimes it is a lie. Because I am just me. I am only me. But anyway, here is the truth of the matter. 
One night, I sat in front of a mirror, and I stared. I stared into it so hard that I thought my eyes might give up on me entirely. And I saw myself, yet not quite myself, looking back at me. And yet my eyes were not the same. They were black. And I could swear that she was smiling, the one in the mirror, where I was not. I knew it. And though I was afraid, I did not want her to go away. So I made her. I created her. I mothered her. And then she created me right back. I've known the truth for a long, long time. There are many versions of us. There have been many versions of us. And there will be many versions of us. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter though. Because we're here now, and this is the only us that will happen in this way. And we must adore this version of us. Here's one more story. One last one for you. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a girl who lay in her bed and saw a figure standing there, staring at her. She's there, waiting for you, too. But wait. There's one more episode left. One more before we say goodbye just for a little while. Not forever, just for a short break. Until we can start again. Try again for a season. One more episode left. I'll finish the story then. Until then, though, good night, my dear friends. Good night. Hello everyone, obviously it's me again, Kristen Zaza, the creative team behind On a Dark Cold Night. As I said before, I hope that you're well. I'm thinking of you, all my listeners out there in this really difficult time, and really wishing the best for all of you. Thank you so much for tuning into episode 99. It's great to speak with you. First off, I would like to say a big thank you to someone whose username is some amateur on Stitcher. I promise that that's what they call themselves. I'm not insulting them. I think they're awesome. <laughs> Uh, some amateur left us a five-star review called Beautiful Chilling Stories, which reads, This podcast is a gem, and I am so thankful to have found it. Your narrator, a character herself, begins by telling you about observations and occurrences in her own life, and follows with a short, spooky story. These tales are a beautifully crafted blend of tension, personal conflict, and beauty that must be heard to be fully appreciated. Like laying in bed on a stormy night, these chilling stories and calming narration will make you want to listen close and snuggle up a little tighter under the covers. Oh my gosh, thank you so, so much for this really sweet review, some amateur. If you would also like to support On a Dark Cold Night, you can leave me a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or on our Facebook page, just like some amateur. I have something pretty cool to announce. If you're listening to this right as it's released, then look out for my first of what will hopefully be many live social media events coming up. I planned to do these between seasons, but since we're all practicing social distancing, as we should be, I thought it would make sense to bump them up a bit earlier and do them more frequently. 
So tomorrow, that's March 22nd, I'm going to do some live readings over Instagram and Facebook Live. I'm going to read some classic horror literature, or rather, your narrator is. So if you'd like to hear some spooky stories in real time, come check it out. That's again on Instagram or Facebook. I'll be starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can send me your requests over social media if you like. I'll be taking as many requests as possible and giving first choice to Patreon or coffee supporters. Speaking of which, I need to thank a new Patreon supporter we got this week. Thank you so much to Jimmy Smick for pledging $5 a month to support the show. I can't tell you how much this means, especially now, so thank you so much, Jimmy. I know it's a really tricky time for all of us financially right now, but if you're in a position to help and want to support the show, you can do so by buying me a coffee at ko-fi.com slash darkcoldnight, or you can help like Jimmy did through Patreon as well, where every monthly patron of any amount can have access to the soundtrack of the show. Find me there at patreon.com slash darkcoldnight. We also have On a Dark Cold Night t-shirts and hoodies available at bonfire.com slash on-a-dark-cold-night, which I believe is still operating at this moment and delivering merch. Also, uh, give me a shout out on Twitter at A Dark Cold Night, Instagram at Dark Cold Night Podcast, or on my Facebook page or YouTube channel, both called On A Dark Cold Night. Season 2 is still going to be coming in July, if not earlier now, though it's hard to say anything for certain at this moment. I will say that it will definitely happen though, so keep an ear to the ground. Again, please take care of yourselves, my friends. I know everyone is saying this on TV and online, but uh, saying it and hearing it really does bring me comfort. You are not alone. None of us are. Hang in there, my friends. And sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs>